Hello, I'm a BX Tweaker, and welcome back to episode 317 of my Minecraft Xbox Update Adventures Let's Play. This is the Let's Play where we've been playing through the various updates that have come out for Minecraft on the console, building stuff, killing stuff, and of course, destroying stuff. And in today's episode, I actually wanted to work a little bit more on that Table Mountain idea, which by the way, as it turns out, is a real mountain in South Africa. We confirmed that 100% last week. But yeah, I wanted to work on the Table Mountain, which as you can see, is looking pretty good already. I think, like, uh, the, the, more, the more time that passes since last week, the more I kind of like the way it looks. It looks like a real mountain now, and it looks like a, you know, a pretty decently uh, put together one. But I need to work on the top of the mountain, because if you look at that from any angle but this one, you can kind of tell it's 2D. You can really see that, like, the, you can tell that there's nothing behind there. And I want to kind of fix that while also getting something very small and satisfying done with it. I'll explain in a second. But first, before any of that, let's quickly repair my diamond shovel. Because, uh, fun fact, this is like a, a tiny lesson I gave out in a video recently. But if you're ever going to make and repair a weapon, i.e. a shovel, or really anything that requires, you know, like, uh, diamonds or and then what you want to do is it's much better in every case, especially with a shovel, rather than going in and just putting some diamonds on, because I, I could repair this with like some diamonds for like this much. So I need four diamonds and five levels to repair this shovel, or if I instead, because bear in mind, you know, that's four shovels basically, or if I put a shovel in there, it repairs it fully for the same cost, oh sorry, for free, which is less cost, and also it goes all the way to the top, which is just an objectively better way to do it. So pro tip, whenever you repair anything, I think the one exception is like a diamond chest plate, but if you repair anything else, you want to make Make sure just to repair the tool together of itself. I'm not sure why it works that way. I think it's maybe to trick people and it used to not be that way. But now in this update, that's what you want to do. And then you get yourself this amazing, uh, you know, shovel repaired for only one more shovel, which makes it objectively better to have just good shovels and stuff. Because <clears throat> back in the day when it cost four uh, diamonds, it was always objectively better just to keep on making new shovels. But in this case, it's not. The, that's not how things are. So yeah, with that said, I've got myself a bunch of dirt. All of the dirt left in the world, as far as I can tell. Like I, I've really drained all my reserves I can find around the place. And and I wanted to now cover this in some dirt. So the fun thing about this that you might, uh, th that I figure, you know, is satisfying, maybe you disagree with me, is um, basically this is entirely dirt, right? If you look around this, this is entirely just pure under a uh, bread dirt. And if, it, if I wanted to make it look like a mountain, then I probably should cover it in grass. I, I wasn't quite sure of it last week, but I think this week I definitely should. So what I'm gonna be, gonna be doing, one of my favorite little satisfying things in Minecraft is uh, actually I'm gonna be covering it in grass, but rather than like actually, you know, laying a lot of grass up here, I wanted to let the grass start just in this one area. I, I was gonna have to make it myself, but evidently it did itself here. But I'm going to make the grass start in just this one area and then slowly cover this entire mountain. So if we cover this up right there, then we're going to start with just four bits of grass. And, and you know, in fact, let's make it even more impressive. Let's make it literally just one bit of grass. Um, <laughs> so we'll remove these blocks right there and then replace them. Let's make it so there is literally just one block of grass in this entire thing, and then we'll let the spread slowly happen from there. It's gonna take like, <clears throat> you know, we're talking like several episodes. We're talking like, uh, you know, maybe like like six episodes from now it'll be done, but there's just gonna be something so satisfying about seeing the spread slowly. Maybe that's just me. Maybe this is like one of those weird, like, uh, you know, weird weird things that only I'm into, but it, it's, it, it's something that I'm very curious to see at the very least, and maybe you are as well. So yeah, we're gonna be covering this whole place in dirt. I think the most important bits is to have like a border around the edge of this, and uh, yeah, we're just gonna see how this one bit of like dirt spreads. I'm I'm kind of worried that this is surrounded by. In fact, actually, let's just remove this dirt layer down here. Let's just make sure there's no no grass that can contaminate it because I need dirt anyway, right? I was just saying, oh, I've used up all the dirt in my world. Well, now there's more dirt for me to use up. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to now see that. Uh, watch the spread slowly happen because every tick there's like some tiny chance. It's like one in a thousand or one in like ten thousand chance that like grass spreads to the next block, and it means that realistically, if you look at any one bit of grass, it never spreads. But if you have lots of bits of grass, then eventually it just magically spreads and gets out of control. It's 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 weird, like uh, you know, physics stuff. But anyway, with that said, uh, that's what I'm doing in this video. Placing a lot of dirt, and you know that might seem like a weird thing, but that's just what we're doing today. So while we place our lot of dirt, by the way, that is a guardian statue back there. Uh, while I place all of my dirt down, which I'm going to be doing, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, you know what I've been up to this past week, which for the most part, again, it's. I, I say this every every week, like there's preparation weeks and then there's like going and doing a thing week. But yeah, as of um, this past week, I did just go to Lithuania, but I'm recording this just before I go because I need to be all prepared for that sort of stuff. And uh, I know there's some countries where I'm like super, super pumped to go to for no particularly good reason. And I don't know why Lithuania is on that list, but it totally is. So uh, yeah, that's one. Okay, there we go. I have a different pick key on the uh, on this version than I do to the other version because the chat key is the right stick. So I have to it, basically I'm I'm, I'm confused by uh, pick locking on this version. It seems now, and uh, honestly, it's you know, actually one more thing I should discuss is like it's kind of sad that like we're slowly seeing the demise of this version, even if like it's the version that you know like it, there's a lot of memories for this version for me. But I'm seeing slowly over time like the reasons to keep playing this version are just gonna keep going down. So as soon as my world is transferable, 
Like, I'm gonna have to start thinking about switching at the very least now. And I'm, I'm not too on board of that, but you know, what am I gonna do? So yeah, I want this to be the last series I have on the Xbox One for the, at least, I wanna keep it running for at least the longest time, but I don't really, I don't really know where to go from here. And it's weird that like, we have this decision to make a Minecraft console. Like I, I, I can't, I can think of very few communities where there's been like such a huge update that you essentially had the option to switch on. And it reminds me a little bit of like, you know, cause the closest thing I can think of is Minecraft on the PC. They had this big combat update and some people just chose not to use it. But when you look back at those people today, they just look kind of silly. Like at the time, I bet they thought they were making a really good impact by being like, yeah, let's not use the combat. But these days, I, I know some of, some people are gonna be like, no, it's like cat, new combat, it's, it's bad. But these days it's just like, that's a part of Minecraft these people just haven't accepted five years later. And uh, imagine how weird it'd be if that's how it looks on the outside uh, for thing. I, I know, like, I feel like being anti-progress is always a hard thing. I, I, I don't think anyone should ever be anti-progress. Like progress is always a good thing. But then sometimes you have to raise the question of like, well, what is progress in this case? And I don't really know in, in every case. So it's just one of those things where it's like, huh, I, I don't know for certain. And I guess it's a confusing time. So uh, yeah, I, I think I think this mountain is gonna look a lot better when we're done with it. And I guess I'm kind of excited for that. So yeah, that's what I've been up to this week. That's what my past Minecraft thoughts have been. Um, it's funny actually, this, uh, it's, because this is, this is something I feel like that affects more channels than just my own, but um, Sometimes like I talk about Minecraft too much and sometimes I talk about it too little. And it's weird that like on a, you know, given that I play Minecraft console, like that, that is what my channel is all about. It's weird that there aren't really many opportunities for me to just like vent my genuine thoughts on like this or that. It has to be always like towards a video's goal because realistically most people aren't here to just hear me talk about like, so what, what am I thinking? It's more like, oh yeah, but what, what do you have to say about this one particular issue? And um, it's interesting that YouTube trends that way. I wonder if it gets more that way or less that way because the trend of daily vloggers is something where you're watching someone entirely for their personality, right? Like you're watching, you just want to see what their day is up to. And uh, I wonder if that's like a, a good thing or a bad thing that there's more personality on YouTube again because I've always thought that like that's the one thing YouTube can do better than any mainstream place. Like if you have a TV show, that person can never display, you know, if you watch any news show, have you ever learned anything about the people on the not show. No, you haven't because they're just, they're essentially robots that are just like reading out the news someone else has written, <laughs> which sounds really weird, but like, you know, calling anyone a robot seems offensive, but it's kind of the case, right? Like if they could hire a robot that would look like a person, they would because it doesn't really matter if the person has thoughts or feelings. Uh, the person is just there to look pretty and, and do the stuff. But YouTube is like different in Hair Leads TV where like, because you're always the person producing it, like it's a one man. You know, everything is an indie uh, show. There's like some non-indie stuff, but it doesn't do too well. Uh, because, er you know, because everything on YouTube is like this big indie thing, it means you have this effect of like, you can always understand, you you're always like, you know, always know a little bit more about the creator and you always kind of know some things about them and you might even care about them or like, and again, I, I wonder if that like trend is a good, is, is actually happening or if I'm just imagining it and uh, really what's happening is we're slowly moving towards the world where YouTube is just like TV, but worse or TV, but yeah, like TV, but worse is if YouTube like turns into that, it wouldn't be good. Like if I had a team of like 15 people, let's say, who are like, okay, Toy Cat, right now, you're rambling on a bit too long. Instead, you gotta focus on the core message, which is selling Toy Cat t-shirts. That's right, you can buy Toy Cat t-shirt. You know, that that would be a, a weird, strange thing, right? So anyway, um, that's, that, that was just a weird thing I think about um, a lot. I, th I think about many like strange things like that, like the direction things are going in, because I feel like predicting the future is impossible, right? You, you, no one can predict what the future will actually be, because there's so many variables changing there. But I think if you can predict the direction the future's going in, that's important and it's also a really good skill to have like if you can if you can just work out that oh yeah so we're moving towards a future where we probably won't have uh, electricity i don't know why I'm, i don't know why you'd guess that but let's just say that like it looks like all the source of electricity on the planet are slowly drying out so we're going to have a future where there's no electrics that sucks but that's just the way the future will be that you know that that's like a dark future and if you can guess that then you wouldn't buy a lot of electronics if you like in 10 years all the electricity is going out you wouldn't do that and that'd be smarter and also you can make investment decisions basically i'm saying knowing the future it makes you an all powerful person like if you if you give one superpower and that superpower can't be like time travel because that's essentially that i think knowledge of the past and knowledge of the future are the two most powerful things you can have. Like that that's the reason history as a whole subject exists because realistically, what value does history have by itself? Like learning about like Henry VIII or, you know, oh geez, um, learning about any old event is really not important by itself, right? Like there's no reason to. The only reason you want to do it is because, you know, like uh, there's one, it's crazy that like humans were that way. And that's like always a fun story. But two, there's like lessons to be learned from the future. like. 
history repeats itself, or so, so some people say. And um, yeah, I feel like knowing the future is just the, all, you know, we, we study history just as like this tiniest vision into like how the future can play out because a lot of things repeat themselves. That's like, there's a, there's a big cycle of humanity, I feel like. Um, which is why, you know, we had, a, we had a war we called like the Great War to end all wars. And then, you know what we did 20 years later? We had a second one because we were like, you know, what? let's give that a redo. Let's make sure that that really was a good one. And um, my, my whole point with all of that is just like, I, I feel like future knowledge is the most important power. And like being a, I think spending some time and at least thinking about it is important. Like, you know, you know, there are some people um, who generally consider that like, oh, yeah, I, I will just get through to tomorrow. Everyone can agree that's not a good way to live life because you're not going to bother brushing your teeth. Uh, you did toothpaste talk. Uh, <laughs> you're not gonna bother brushing your teeth or whatever. Um, you're not gonna bother. Um, you know, like, you're not gonna be doing anything. Like, why? Why even do like? This is my logic in school, actually. Like, I was living, you know, day to day, and it's like, why would I bother doing my work? I don't. I don't really care if I'm here tomorrow or whatever. So if I feel like when that's your attitude, uh, you just make objectively worse long-term decisions because you don't care about long-term. Uh, so if you do care about long-term, then working out what the long-term will be is important. And that's why I'm. I'm just saying. Like, guessing what the future will be is important, and that's why I do it sometimes. Um, and as far as, like, what I think it will be, in terms of Minecraft, like, probably, I think in five years, it will be a much smaller community. Like, Minecraft, when it first released on YouTube, uh, I, I think YouTube made it the biggest game, but it also, it being the biggest game, made YouTube... I, Minecraft was the biggest community for some amount of time, like... I don't, I don't remember, I can't tell you exactly when to where, I can't tell you how long it was, but there was some decent amount of time where Minecraft was the biggest game. I think over the next few years, we're going to see a lot of the channels that hopped onto Minecraft just because they figure, you know, let's let's get some easy views. I think that is going to be something we see, like, I, I think we're already seeing it, in fact. Um, so that's, that's my prediction in terms of, like, something that realistically affects you and me. Um, you'll probably see less Minecraft channels, but probably more dedicated ones. Or maybe everyone just get burnt, gets burnt out on it at some point where they're just like, oh. I just, I can't, I can't make this table mountain much longer. Uh, but yeah, no, I, the, the thing about Minecraft is like, unlike most other games, it really has this like infinite capability. Like I could play this world, like if I was locked in a, in a prison cell, I think I would ask to, you know, like, and they were like, bring free things in there. Cause that's how prisons work. I think if you brought Minecraft, you could generally have like 30 years of entertainment. If you know what you're doing and you, you do it right. Or, or maybe you could, I, I don't know for certain. That's just my my theory at the very least, and it's, it's something I generally do believe. So, you see that? That one block's now turned into like a whole little patch over here, and we place even more blocks, it's gonna expand even more, and uh, yeah, we're gonna eventually have that cover the whole mountain, and a part of it, I don't know why that's so satisfying to me, but it really just uh, feels like seeing something small slowly take hold like that, I've just always enjoyed seeing it. So, anyway, uh, besides uh, just thinking about like the future in general, which is always a good thing, like, you know, in the future, will we really have flying cars? I don't think so, for instance. But I was also thinking about uh, whether this is, so this is a, a common thought of like, now is the best time ever in history to be born. And I, I wonder sometimes if this is the best time ever, ever to be born, or if this is like, because you know, you know, if you think back to like someone in the 500 years ago, let's just say, and if they, if they were to say, you know, out loud and you read it in a book, this is the best time that will ever be and that will ever happen. You'd laugh them and you'd be like, wow, dude, you had to literally urinate in the street. I don't, I don't know if I think that's the best time. Um, and that's, you know, that could be how we think of things today. Like, there's so many just random things from today that, like, we accept as normal, but they're not, you know, it, it's not going to be like, it, it's going to seem barbaric in, like, 20, 30, or 100 years. And I, I sometimes wonder, I sometimes wonder if, like, if we are at the very edge, if we're, like, the best humanity would ever be, or if we're at the worst, or if it's good not to be at the best. Like, right now, um, so this, this is, this is something interesting that, like, I don't think anyone really ever talks about, um, but basically at some point in the future, whether, again, this is, if you talk about it being too soon in the future, it gets political. So we'll just say, like, at some point in the far future, I think we can all agree at some future point, again, whether that, where that point is, is debatable, but at some point in the future, we will have robots replace humans, because right now, you know, think about a factory, 50 years ago, you used to just, like, have human beings working in that factory, Nowadays, it's stupid to buy a robot that does it. Like, think about how cars are made. They have those, like, giant robotic arms. Because the robotic arms, they're cheaper, they're better, and they're safer than a person. So, yeah, that's, that's like, slowly going to happen to every job because it's it's pretty nutty, actually. You can look into it. Like, pretty much everything a human can do, 
a robot can eventually learn, which again, it's it's scary stuff when you think about it, but it's just one of those things, right? But anyway, so um, given that like robots can eventually replace humans, then you have the question of like, so once a robot can do everything a human can do, and we have just, you know, the cost of doing everything is zero, it's just electricity, which eventually you can make, you can make robots which get electricity. So, you know, once the cost of everything is zero, uh, because eventually that is like the plan. Whether, whether it happens or not is a thing, but that's the plan at the very least. Once everything starts cost zero and there's no need for you to have a job, that sounds like it's the perfect life. But I sometimes think about that and I think it's actually like a trick horrifying question. Like again, it sounds on the surface, it sounds perfect to never have to work again, right? But I think the, you know, like we, we live in a world where we believe we work just because you know, we have to, or because like, oh yeah, well I need money. Because when you're like 15, when you get your first job, um, when I, you know, wrote those articles back in the day or on that website, um, I did think that it was like, yeah, I, I'd like money. Money buys a lot of the things I like. And <laughs> if you could give that to me, I'd quite, I'd quite like that in exchange my services. But uh, yeah, it's interesting though, that like, uh, I, I feel like you actually need to do something in your life. Like I, I've considered like, if I, if I wanted to, not like right now, but like maybe in like 20 years, I probably could like just if, if if you save for like 20 years of working and you live so frugally you could give up and you could retire at like age 35 or something but the reason that's not actually a good idea is because there's something about like this working feeling the, the feeling of um you know mattering or like the feeling of doing something you care about that is better than like just like again if i if i could just play minecraft all day that'd be great fun but like you know if i could play video games in general like let's just say you can do anything you want all day I think after like a week, the reason the reason we go on like holidays is because we almost realize that we're like, oh, wouldn't it be great to just do nothing all day? And then you do nothing all day for like 10 days and you're like, whoa, that was too much. Or like for me, it's like after like four days um, or like three days or something. But it's just, it's just an interesting feeling of like, but when there's no reason to do anything because robots can do everything, how do you get that feeling? You know, you, you, you can't feel needed because no one is needed there. <laughs> you know, it's just not a thing that is, exists in the world. There is, there is no need for anyone anymore. And that's why I think we're in this perfect time period where we still, we have like all these robot advancements into life. Oh, you know what my favorite, this is, okay. I swear everyone will think I'm being sarcastic when I say this, but I, I'm not, I, I genuinely do think one of the greatest inventions of our time and that's gonna happen in the next 10 years is like self-service at like, let's say fast food restaurants, but regular restaurants, uh, my local pub does it for instance. This is just like the most mind blowing invention because instead of having to speak to a human and like you, you line up, you waste your time so you can speak to a human that objectively, you know, gets your order wrong like 10 times, one in every 100 times, one every 50 times. Like how many times have you ordered a Coke but got a Diet Coke or ordered a Diet Coke but got a Coke? I'm making an example right there. But like that, that just happens. Like humans make mistakes, but now you don't have to. And it's like, oh, this is, this has never been possible before. You know, what? you want to go to a fast food restaurant 500 years ago? Guess what? It's not going to exist. You want to go to a fast food restaurant 500 years in the future? We won't have fast food. We'll just, we'll have these little pills we eat and uh, <laughs> we'll probably have like better stuff to like simulate the senses. But my point being is there is something about the present to love, I think at the very least. Because um, there's also the, the other side of things like, um, isn't the scary thing about living now when all this stuff is about to come? That when you, you know, like there's, we, we're gonna be like really old by the time we colonize Mars. I'll be like 80 by the time we land on Mars. And it's like, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be cool to see all that sort of stuff? But isn't it way cooler to imagine all that sort of stuff and say, yeah, it'll probably happen. Because um, living, living through something actually isn't too exciting. Like knowing something's coming is exciting. And after something's happened, it's really exciting. But the moment it happens isn't quite as good as it should be. Maybe maybe this applies in some way to Minecraft. I'd, I'd like to make that comparison. But uh, one of one of my favorite types of YouTube videos that just started appearing on my homepage and now I watch a lot is like um, the n really important news, like really world famous news. Not like, you know, uh, after the fact, like, oh yeah, 9-11 happened two weeks ago. But as they're happening, like as people are reacting with them live and even like it's something as huge as the, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the, literally, a country broke, basically. A whole set of countries broke, and uh, you know, just the entire world order that existed at that point changed. And on the news, it's just like, oh yes, so it is fallen, and Mr. Gorbachev has uh, yet to make a comment. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> this is like the hugest deal. This this is such a big deal for like world everything, and it's just it's just not a big deal because uh, you know at the time it doesn't seem like such a big deal because it's just a thing that's happening that day, and I feel like. This can happen even in your own life. Like if you, have you ever been somewhere and then kind of not realized what a big deal it was? Like if, if you're just, if you get surprised and you're going somewhere, 
like, uh, this this happened to me once. I, I was surprised, like, oh, yeah, we're going to Disney World. Which one's in Florida? Um, Disneyland? Disney World? But you don't really properly, like, process it until it, uh, well, well after the fact. As a fun fact, that's, like, what, the only time I went abroad until I was, like, 17, I think, was um, going to Florida when I was, like, free. So, fun, fun little fact for you. Uh, but, yeah, with that said, one of the things... Um, one of the things about it, though, is you don't really process a lot of things until afterwards. Um, like, uh, I, I don't remember... I heard this very recently from, like, some random source. But it's like, it takes you until that many days after the event to properly process the event. Um, and I, I don't know where I heard that, actually. I, I definitely heard that from somewhere uh, recently. And it's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, the, knowing something's about to happen, or knowing something happened a while ago and that was crazy... Uh, like, you know, Henry VIII and his, like, wife's killing? You might think, like, whoa, he killed, like, five women. Like, at the time, it probably wasn't notable. If you were a peasant at that time, you know, like an average person, and someone told you about that, you'd be like, oh, is that, is that all you're telling me, Fred? You got anything exciting? You got anything to tell me about those, I don't know, pigskin footballs or whatever? And I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I think it's interesting. It sounds so scary to know that you won't be alive for some human events. Like, you know, again, just most of human history. But it's actually kind of more fun that way because you can you can believe your own future um like i said i, I like to try and not guess the future because that sounds stupid oh i have some dirt left i have two stacks four stacks this is all the dirt in my world left i swear okay we got this many stacks of dirt let's use them all up because that that'd be quite satisfying i think um you know just be like all the dirt i've ever had in my world i've just had too many projects i need to go to sleep and they're all gone now. Um, so yeah, one, one, one other thing I was uh, also... Because, you know, there's a lot of things in the world that shock the people who don't do it. Like, where there's like two groups of humans, one who do, do, the, uh, one, one group who does it and one group who doesn't. Kind of like, um, imagine if half the world lied, but they lied so convincingly, the other half never knew. Or like, um, I know there's a whole bunch of things like this where like, when you hang out with people, you're like, you do that? And they're like, yeah. And you're like, whoa, I guess I didn't know. Uh, what what are these things that shock me? This this will sound like like I'm being rude probably, but you know I think five year old me was being very rude. But like when I'd go around some of my friends' houses for like let's say a birthday party or for this or for that, um, I, when I go around their houses, I just notice like this is a very very you know like I, I, I guess the word to describe it would be dirty house. Like yeah, I, I didn't know what to think at the time. It was just like there's something off about this house. Like this is a really weird toilet seat or you know whatever it is like I, I can probably process it at the time I'd just be like I don't it's but you know look, looking back to it apparently like five year old me was just being like because I, I had a mother who was like really into like clean I don't know why she needed everything to be clean all the time but like she cleaned like non-stop basically so the house always looked like fresh and brand new but like that's not what most people do so whenever you go around someone's house that is like that you kind of think like whoa this is this is nutty and you know they don't realize you exist you don't realize they exist but in some cases there's like a, a thing where like 50% of people do something and the other half don't. And my favorite example of this is like uh, peeing in the shower, right? Like people who don't do it, right now, about half of you, I think it's like 49 or 51% of you are just like, no no way half people urinate in the shower to the cat. You are, you are messing with me, that is horribly unclean. And the other half like, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's mixing with the water. <laughs> of course I do it. But the, the crazy thing on that one, my, my favorite like, you know, next level mind blow on this one is like, then there's like 2% of people I don't understand why they do this. It can't even be smarter, but they pee in the sink. So, you know, next time you're... Uh, again, that, that, that's my favorite one. Just like, next time you're doing anything, just, uh, you know, consider that. Just like, it might sound gross to you, but just, you know, give it a try maybe. Consider it in your life, and uh, then we'll all be happy. I've, I've heard, actually, uh, there was a big campaign from, like, a water company in the UK back when we had to save water that was just like, you know, save water, pee in the shower. But as it turns out, running a shower for 40 seconds where you stand there and just, like, you know do it is actually like worse for the environment. So all they have to do is be like, well, make sure you're also cleaning your hair or something. <laughs> I don't know, just, uh, you know, there you go. Terrible story for you all. Half of you are horrified right now. Half of you are thinking like, really? The other half not even know? Like, what are they doing in the shower? Are they, are they so holy? But it's, it's, again, it's kind of wacky that like, people with such different worldviews and different like, opinions on things can coincide and just kind of assume the other half is like them. And I've, I've always thought that's kind of cool and kind of strange, honestly, actually. But yeah, as you can see, my Table Mountain is, like, very, very flat, very, very close to completion now. And this grass, you know, it started with one block earlier this episode, and look how satisfyingly it spread. Just look at that spread. 
Tell me you're not satisfied by that, because I'll give you a clue. You can't tell me that, because it's not the truth. So yeah, um, before I go today, I wanted to also mention one more thing, because it happened kind of like coincidentally, and I was like, yeah, that's perfect, and someone will assume I set that up that way. But I, 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 was, I recall I was speaking about, um, I think I was speaking about like the whole homeless people thing. Again, no one likes to say this, and I, I, it sounds like such a jerky thing to say, but like homeless people sell you unhappiness, uh, or they sell you happy, you know, sell you making you not feel bad, if you give them money. And that's that's awful, you like to believe you're really just helping out, but no, you just, they make you feel awkward or bad or something like that, and then you give them money. And uh, that's that's what, uh, it, it's funny, because that's like basically what a lot of YouTubers do, right? Or let's say streamers, it's more streamers than YouTubers. They'll be like, oh yeah, you can donate me money, and if you don't, then I guess, you know, maybe I don't get to eat so much. Um, but I've always been the thing of like, you know, I, you know, probably have enough money from the whole YouTube thing, it's like just about working out right now. Um, you know, like, if you, if you want to do it, then you get this and that and you feel good. And I didn't realize till afterwards that, like, it was a perfect analogy for the, the homeless thing. And I'm always scared when I do something like that. Like, what if people just end up saying, like, oh, yeah, well, you made that last week. Have you been planning this sponsorship thing all along? Uh, but as far as I can tell, like, they, I, there was no way I was going to be accepted into the sponsor program. It just kind of happened out that way. And I think it's kind of cool. Again, I, there's been a lot of people who have just sponsored randomly when streams aren't going on. Because they're like, yeah, I like to support the channel. And I've just been, I've been so grateful for that, personally. I, I, when I when I first got the sponsorship thing, I was like, maybe I'll get like five sponsors. And now we're at like 16 or something and counting. Probably more by the time this episode goes live. And uh, it just, it makes me feel good and warm and fuzzy. And hopefully it does the same for you. So... Yeah, as you can see, this mountain's gonna look pretty great, but there's one more thing, actually, uh, that I need to address, which is this huge hole in the mountain, because I want to dig, like, a staircase going up here. So, like, uh, I guess, you know what, let's, let's just dig it down right now. I want to have a staircase going like this. Okay, that probably isn't good. Like, going down into here, and just going all the way down out here. So there's, like, a secret, like, entrance up and down this thing. I don't know if there is even physically enough blocks to do this properly, but I want to make it, like, a huge staircase, too, so it's, like, a grand... Secret entrance. Again, don't know if that's even properly possible. But it sounds like a fun idea. So, you know, actually, let's... Let's right now... Okay, there's a skeleton there. Should we go kill the skeleton first? Let's do it. But yeah, I also want to, like... Oh, extra critical hit. I feel like critical should do more damage the higher you fall from, right? Like, wouldn't it be cool if, like, if you fell from, like, 200 blocks and hit someone? It did, like, 2,000% damage. It'd be pointless, because you'd die afterwards, but it'd make you want to go and do all that sort of stuff. So I believe that zombie's trapped there. So yeah, I'm gonna mostly cover up these entrances, or actually wait, if, if you if we go back a little bit, you'll see if I'm not mistaken. I don't believe I'm mistaken. Yeah, that looks mostly like a heart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that look like fully like a heart, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how to do that properly, actually. Yeah, I guess we just have to like cover up a lot of that and then make this go around. But still, we can, we can make a beautiful heart. So I'm gonna turn this into like a heart cave and then that can be the entrance maybe. Or I can turn that into a heart because I don't know why, but like, when a, when a heart shape looks like it's made out organically, there's just something so beautiful about it. And I want to I wanna have more of that. So, yeah, with that said, this is the secret back entrance to the Table Mountain. Uh, I'll give you one more look at it, because next week we'll probably be moving on to something else. Oh, yeah, you can fly on water. Always forget that one. But yeah, this is what the Table Mountain looks like from the top. It's very, very flat and mostly made of dirt. But when you get any real good distance on it, I really like the way it looks. So if we go to the top of the anvil, for instance, so let's just sit right here. Like, this is, I don't know, it, it looks, it's a stunning feature in the world now. I have made a mountain, and maybe, if I can build a mountain, you can build a molehill? I don't know, thank you very much for watching today's video. Like it if you liked it, share it if you really liked it. Subscribe when you're around here, make sure you hit the bell, because that's just new subscriptions on YouTube. Actually, you know what, let me just quickly talk about that. I, I say that, and some people are like, no, it's like that, there is still regular subscriptions. But, given that YouTube has more and more control over whether you should see subscriptions, and again, I used to be really on board with this, until they started... They gave it to an algorithm now, so all the algorithm cares about is like, will you watch more videos and will you leave the site? And it doesn't care if like, it doesn't give you videos that it will think will improve you or that might make you leave YouTube. But, and that's something that you can take into your own hands. So yeah, if you want to keep on seeing these videos, uh, just hit the bell. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye.